So take a look at this. A buddy of mine wants to build an eyebrow dormer on his roof. So from the from the front, it's six foot wide, and it's a three foot radius, right? So the center of three feet, pull a radius, you know, and it's dying out on a six twelve pitch roof. So if you take this curve and you flip it around sideways, here it is from this elevation view, side view, right? And so essentially, this this is 6, 12, and that's the hypotenuse. His dormer is 3 feet tall, so that's 3 feet. And then draw a line level. This is 6, 12, and that's 3, 6. And this is the hypotenuse. Now this is a sleeper. The term they use is overlay. So... We use the California frame, but this is an overlay. And what we want, essentially this one, you could take a sheet of plywood and cut a whole bunch of ribs out of inch and an eighth plywood and just run them all this length here, right? And then you can, as they begin to taper back, each one could get a slightly shorter. And if this continued on, then there'd be a, at a certain point, there'd be a triangular wall because they stop getting wider. But they narrow as they go back because the sleeper is an ellipse laying flat on the sheet, plywood. How do we get that ellipse? Well, there's a major and minor axis. The, ma the major axis, well, the major axis is going up the rake. The minor axis is the width of the dormer, which is six feet. Half of that is three feet, so we put it in a three-foot leg like this, and 90 degrees to it, we take the hypotenuse where it lays on the roof, slide it over, and you could do this by math. This is essentially a six foot run times the line length ratio would give you this rafter length. We always did it by the math. So you didn't have to snap the whole thing out. So one leg would be the rafter length of a three foot rise, six foot run. The other length would be half of the minor. And then there's a lot of ways to get an ellipse. You can use a string, you can use a straight edge with the pencil on it. And as you slide the straight edge down like this, the pencil can, you, you put the mark on your pencil at the minor axis and then you set it here. And as you slide down, it'll kind of give you this curve, but I don't like that. So I just always have taken the most accurate method, which is essentially divide this into some number of increments and then the same number of increments on the minor and connect the first one down, the first one from the corner, second one down, second one from the corner. Just keep connecting them until they cross each other like a spiral graph. And then I would connect dots. Now this thing will be cut out of plywood, granted, you know, and um, we still have an issue, right? Which is that if you zoom in here, you can see that the actual sleeper, let's say it's an inch and a half thick, it's not gonna go all the way to zero. So there's a couple things you can do. We didn't really worry so much. We just took two or three sheets of half inch or two sheets of three quarter, whichever you prefer. And we just slid the whole thing down a little bit so that the lead edge was in plane. We wanna know how much that is. You just draw it out here. This is an inch and a half. You see how this is going up the rake here, and dying into the top plane of it? This, if this is an inch and a half sleeper, then this is an inch and a half, this line here. So just down here, same thing. This is the inch and a half, same kind of thing, but upside down. Of course, if it's a 612, then this is three inches, right? right, which would mean this bottom would be three inches. So then you'd make a mark and you would just slide this whole 
apparatus down three inches and cut off the three inch extra. And so it was three inches shy of the top so that the plywood would plane. You could also use three sheets of half inch plywood. One could be closer, the next one further away, next one further away. So essentially you're feathering at the peak, right? As you go, you slide them forward so that you're more accurate here, right? So be a half inch and then another half inch and so forth. So that you are only really cutting a half inch off of the bottom sheet of plywood. With the second one over, you'd cut an inch and the third one on the top, you'd cut an inch and a half off it in order to achieve this. Now this is only a, half of it the other half would be over here right but you only ever want to calculate it once because if there's a slight error on this one you want to make it the same on both you don't want it to be irregular in any way even though it's a slight error there's always some kind of error and then once you snap this out on a sheet of plywood in real time you'd measure down whatever the thickness of your sleeper would be which essentially would be whatever the thickness of these I should say width of these ribs, right? Whatever the uh, level cut of the ribs are. Now, if you wanted to, you could go with two by going from this one to the sleeper going that way, and it would turn as it went up. I always found it easier to go with a whole mess of these, you know, so there's a bunch of them. At, you know whatever 12 inches on center or whatever you like going that way but you could also just connect dots from this one with two by it's harder though because as you turn you have these compound angles that are ever changing and that's very difficult you have to essentially you can't really do the math you could do the geometry if you were so inclined it's a pain but you just measure all four points all four points are different you would snap out of the center line up, let's say this was the sheet of plywood behind you and you would snap out of the center line, you know, till you're around 16 inches on this ledger. No, it's not easy. So this way is easier because if your ribs are going vertical, then you know you always are gonna have a 612 pitch, in this case, side cut all the way up as they get littler and littler and littler and littler, right? You're gonna to wanna to lay out all of these sleepers I'm sorry, ribs on this big one, on one big one. And that's going to be simply done by when you have it full snap, snap fully and you draw all these ribs, 16 or 12 inches on center or whatever, and they go down, you just transfer them over to this one here, right? And then you know, and then you, of course, got to transfer them all the way over to this one. And then you know how long it's going to be whether you go to long or short point of your bevel is up to you, but you run all the way over to here. You're always gonna go to your long, right? Here, but not necessarily. You go, add some thickness to this one, make it an inch, inch and an eighth plywood or two sheets of inch and an eighth plywood, just make it a single inch and an eighth plywood. And then from the sh short point, 16 inches on center. Once you establish the short point, run them all the way across and then just stretch your tape around this curve. Now you'll need a malleable tape, and that's what your, you will be your short point. And you'll mark it on this one. All of them are gonna be level. You'll mark it on, use this as a template to put on your next one, transfer down, you know, your next rib, transfer the marks down, pull it away, run your skill saw, mark it number two. Put this template on the third one, transfer that mark onto the third one on either side, Always a level cut, so you're gonna to have to establish what level cuts are, basically. What you're gonna be doing that by drawing these lines across on your, your original rib so that it's parallel to the top and bottom. That's how you know it's level. And the center line will always be the center line straight back. Can't go wrong. Then you'll put a one by across there, inside or outside, to hold it you know, and embrace it or whatever, block it out. You pull it off and then the way you sheet it and the way we've always sheeted it, if it's really steep, is with quarter inch sheets. First thing we do is just take black paper, you know, a uh, building paper and cut it with a, a knife, you know, and then lay it out. But 
theoretically, you know, you can do this whole thing on a quarter inch sheet. Uh, no, that's a different app apparatus. Just save yourself time. Run black paper, cut it out, lay it on the sheet, and cut out the uh, uh, ellipse on it. And on the quarter of plywood and then bend it over, nail it, take another piece and bend it over, nail it, and so forth. Each piece will get slightly bigger, 